Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are doing great. I welcome you to Maulana Ajad National Urdu University. As you all know, this is Dr. K. Nagendra from the Department of English, Assistant Professor. And today, I am here to talk about another important topic. Are you ready? I hope you know the importance of teaching language skills in English language teaching. Before we talk about all the four important skills, let me give you a small introduction about all these four skills. Teachers tend to talk about the way we use language in terms of four skills, reading, writing, speaking and listening. They are often divided into two types, receptive skills and productive skills. Receptive skills is a term used for reading and listening. Skills where meaning is extracted from the discourse. Discourse means it is like talk or conversation a dialogue. When it comes to productive skills, it is the term for speaking and writing skills where students have to produce language themselves. That is why we call them a productive skills because students have to produce they speak and they write. That's why we treat them as a productive skills. There is some concern about separating skills in this way, especially since they are seldom separated in real life. We might also want to question a once commonly held view that receptive skills are somehow passive, whereas productive skills are in some way more active. I told you earlier that receptive skills like it's a passive way of doing things because when you listen to uh, something like you don't actively involve but you listen. But when it comes to productive skills there you need to involve in each and everything and you need to produce. So that's why we call receptive skills are passive skills but whereas productive skills are active skills. It is certainly the case that when we speak or write we are producing language and no one would argue with the idea the language activation takes place when we are doing this. But reading and listening also demand considerable language activation on the part of the reader or listener. We cannot access meaning unless our brains are fully engaged with the text we are interacting with. In other words, we have to think to understand using any or all of our language knowledge to get meaning from what we are seeing or hearing. But in any case, whether we are reading or speaking, we often mix what we are doing with other skills. It makes little sense to talk about skills in isolation since, as Ely Hinkle points out, in meaningful communication, people employ incremental language skills not in isolation but in tandem. When we are engaged in conversation, we are bound to listen as well as speak. Otherwise, we could not interact with the person we are speaking to. Teachers frequently relay on notes they have written previously and people listening to teachers often write notes of their own. Even reading generally thought of as a private activity often provokes conversation and comment. Writing too is rarely done in isolation. Much of today's communication is electronic, for example, via emails, text messages and social networks. We read what people send to us and then reply fairly instantly. And even when we are writing on our own, we generally read through what we have written before we send it off. Sometimes, of course, this is not the case when dealing with emails and text messages, but writers and texters often regret sending their messages in haste. Clearly, therefore, a skill is used multi-layered in this way. It would make no sense to teach each skill in isolation. We will therefore look at how input and output are connected in the classroom, how skills can be integrated 
and how skill and language worker connected. Receptive skills and productive skills feed off each other in number of ways. What we say or what we write is heavily influenced by what we hear and see. Our most important information about language comes from this input. Thus, the more we see and listen to comprehensible input, the more English we acquire, notice or learn. This input takes many forms. Teachers provide massive language input as does audio material in the classroom and variety of reading text that students are exposed to. Students may read extensively or listen to podcasts. They may interact with other English speakers both inside and outside the classroom. But students get other input too especially in relation to their own output. When a student produces a piece of language and sees how it turns out that information is fed back into the acquisition process. And the student's response to their own output becomes input. Such input or feedback can take various forms. Some of it comes from ourselves whether or not we language learners. We modify what we write or say as we go along based on how effectively we think and what we are communicating. Feedback also comes from the people we are communicating with. In face-to-face -face spoken interaction, our listeners tell us in a number of ways whether we are managing to get our message across. On the telephone, listeners can question us and or show through their intonation. Intonation is all about pitch variation in the speech. Rising, falling, fall rise, rise fall, level tone, etc. Tone of voice, yeah, that's very, very important because we can modify our tone depends on a situation whom we are speaking to. Or lack of response that they have not understood us. So it shows intonation plays a crucial role when it comes to listening and speaking in order to convey a meaning. Teachers can of course provide feedback too not just when a student finishes a piece of work but also during the writing process for example or when acting as a resource they offer ongoing support. Let us have a look at dynamic relationship between input and output. Here we have uh, each and every diagram which talks about uh, input and output. The first one, teacher's feedback. Next, we have other students' feedback. Other students' participation. Student modifies his or her understanding. Student sees how it turns out. If you look at this input, what we generally use, audio or video tapes, native speakers in person. Native speakers in person, I mean to say that in case if you come across or if you happen to meet a native speaker whose mother tongue is English and we usually speak, like there will be some problem when it comes to intonation or pronunciation or any other language issues. So one should be very careful and one should be attentive while speaking to the speakers whose mother tongue is English. Native speakers media. This is also one of the ways like through which we can develop our communication skills or language skills. Because there are many videos and audios available. Suppose if you just log into BBC website or that is bbclearningenglish.com or even there are many other videos, but you need to be very selective and choose you like when you go for online or native speaker media because even there are some native speakers whose English is not intelligible. So one should be very careful about it. Next, reading and pedagogic text. This is also one of the good sources like through which we can learn many language skills. We can also improve the teacher and which is unreplaceable because 
teacher is the main source and who provides a lots of information for us. And as you all know that a student has to work on a language. When we move on to output, there are two important things. Suppose if you follow all these inputs, what I already told you that, that is audio, video tapes, and native speakers in person, native speakers media, or reading and pedagogic text, and teacher, and the output is uh, speech and writing, what we call them as productive skills. Well, so far we talked about teaching English language skills. And first we talked about introduction to all these language skills. And even I also talked about how we divided all these four skills into two types. They are receptive skills and productive skills. I told you very clearly that receptive skills are reading and listening. And whereas productive skills are speaking and writing. I also told you that receptive skills also can be called as passive skills. Productive skills also can be called as active skills because students, they themselves will involve and they produce. I hope you had a nice session. And let us meet with another important session talking about uh, That's the end of this session. 